Hello everybody. Uh, got the back of a wall. We got a storage module in the bottom and a very tiny tripod holding this camcorder. And uh, we'll see how this setup goes for the most part. In any event, it's that time once again where I come across a cheap retro inspired item and it's cheap and I pick it up because I'm kind of foolish in that regard and I'd figure it'd make a wonderful subject matter for a overly long YouTube video that very few people will actually watch. Might as well tell it like it is. <laughs> in any event, uh, I came across this thing. It was 30 bucks. The Data East Hits Pixel Player Portable Gaming System featuring 8 Data East Classics and 300 games. So that gives you 308 games on one little tiny uh, handheld. Mr. Sad Onion right there. And a warning sign. And this thing is recyclable, but don't toss it in the bin. I always get confused by that. Anyways, my arcade. This is from the folks at Dream Gear. And uh, it has some actual licensed games, not just some rubbish. In the back here we have features, 300 games plus 8 memorable Data East classics. Full color screen. 8-bit game system. Front speaker with volume control. 3.5mm headphone jack. Something that iPhones apparently do not have because it takes courage or something. I don't know. I have a Samsung phone that has a headphone jack, so I don't know. Powered by either four AAA batteries or micro USB, neither of which is included. Also not included is an AV, is a AV jack, which I do have laying around, and that's what I'll be using to present the footage for you here, which, to be fair, that's not so much a standard thing anymore. It includes the pixel player and user guide. Some wonderful pictures. We look on the inside here. We have your eight Data East games being showcased. Got Bad Dudes, Caveman Ninja, Burger Time, Breakthrough, Heavy Barrel, Karate Champ, Side Pocket, and B Wings. The uh, last one being a common game to find on a lot of those 101 uh, NES multi-cart things of the pirate variety, if you will. A brief text blurb. There's nothing in the box because I've already been playing with the thing for three hours. So I could give you some initial impressions on how it feels, at least, if not the actual content of the games themselves. And here we have a little plastic thing to uh, hang on the displays. We don't really need that. For that matter, we don't really need the box. We'll put that aside or recycle it or whatever the case may be. The Pixel Player Manual, which comes in eight different languages, I had to actually count. Which, uh, you know, fairly thick manual. How many actual pages of instructions do we have? Blank page. Blank inside cover, page one, page two, page three, page four, and page five. And then the rest of it's en français, en espagnol, en italiano, en portugués, en Dutch. And okay, there's a bunch of languages, there's only five pages a piece. So if you want to know how to play any of the games, you're shit out of luck. Pretty much. So now let's get to the meat and potatoes of the uh, package, the Pixel Player itself. And uh, to borrow a, an Ashen's phrase, so to speak, from the old days, this feels light, cheap, and plasticky. And also the build quality isn't fantastic. And first real issue that I have is the uh, one battery cover is removable. The other, uh, not so much. I'd imagine I'd e it's either stuck or I really I need a lot of force. But I uh, I'm afraid if I use a lot of force, uh, I might break something. 
because it's so so cheap. So uh, any chances of me using this thing as a portable system is uh, well not much luck there. So I'm gonna have to power it with the uh, micro USB, which it doesn't come with, but you know you could get plenty of those things everywhere. So uh, in that regard, eh, it's kind of unfortunate, but eh. I don't know if it's just this unit or if it's a commonality. Actually, uh, I can't say. I came across one other unit that a buddy picked up because he wanted one for himself, and he also had the same problem. So I'd imagine it's either a molding issue, or maybe we just came across the only two units that had this problem and the rest of them. Uh, turned out okay, but we're not going to buy another one because that, that's just a waste of money down. Anyways, you got your uh, screen, you got your A button, your B button, and it is A and B, so it acts like A and B. So on the one hand, uh, for platformers and stuff like that, most likely the buttons will be jump and attack, which is, you know, the opposite of what one would be trained to use on the NES or Game Boy or whatever the case may be. But on the other hand, Bad Dudes on the NES has proper controls. And yes, just getting that out of the way, and I probably mentioned it in the pickup videos that I did ages ago, it is the NES versions, not the arcade versions, which is, you know, unfortunate, but uh, not to be expected. And I almost knocked off the camcorder, which is fantastic. Anyways, we got the D-pad, which goes all the way in because there's no pivot to, well, pivot to directions, which you kind of need that pivot in order to have a precise directional pad. Whereas this, if you just slip up and down, you'll chances are you'll move up and down, and chances are you'll just stall and won't move, and you have to press it twice in order to move in a certain direction. And that's an issue that I've had with a number of games on this system. So, yeah, so the D-pad is hot garbage, the A and B buttons is, eh, it's okay. You got your start button, which pauses most of the time, some of the time, some games don't pause at all. You have a reset button, you have your uh, volume control, you have your AV out for an AV cable, which I have one, I have a spare laying around. So I'm going to plug that to the DVD player, and then, and that's how I'm going to get footage. Your auxiliary out, which is presumably your headphone jack. Your micro USB charge cable, which is what you use to plug to power this thing, and that's unfortunately the route I'm going to have to take. And then finally you have your switch, which is either off, on, or you go all the way and the buttons will light up and, and you know have a grand old time with that. But you're just better off just doing it in the middle, especially if it's battery powered, since that doesn't kill the batteries like that. Anyways, uh, it's not that great in the hands, and I've played this thing already for three hours, by the way, you know, getting footage, and eh. After a while, this starts to hurt my thumb. The buttons, they're not the greatest buttons in the world, but they, they serve a purpose for what little you do with them, and um, yeah. So that's as far as I'm going to go. As far as the externals, I think I've wasted more than enough time talking about the externals. Let's get to the real meat and potatoes of this device and look at the games for who knows how many hours we're going to be here, but we are going to be here a good long while. So uh, roll the footage, please. Okay, so we're going to fire up the system, and as you can see, we have a rather colorful menu. More, much more colorful than I was expecting, and as expected, the eight featured games of this Pixel Player package is front and center, and then the rest of the way, we have the usual assortment of rip-off games and cheapo, nice code garbage that uh, we'll be going through for the duration of however long this video takes. Hopefully it won't take that long, but you never know with these things. Some of these games require a little explanation, and some of these games require the least amount of time spent on them as humanly possible. So we're just going to scroll through the system. Uh, eight games per page. I'll let you do the math on how many pages that is in total. But if you've played any NES Famicom multi-cart thing, it's pretty much the same deal. 
and uh, you have your D-pad, which isn't the greatest D-pad, and the buttons feel... Well, let's just say I've played bootleg power player plug-and-play things that felt a little more reliable than this. But regardless, we're going to kick things off right off the bat with a little game of Bad Dudes. Everybody ba loves the Bad Dudes, right? The Bad Dudes, the uh, president kidnapped by ninjas, and you have to rescue the president and, and stuff because you're a bad enough dude and stuff. This is based on the NES version, naturally. It'd be a great achievement if these were based on the arcade versions, but unfortunately that's not the case. And also, as you've probably seen on the title screen if you, in case you missed it, this is only a one-player game. Usually, Bad Dudes is a two-player game. Although I think the home version is like alternating play, I don't remember. It's been a while. But, uh, we're gonna play through the first level of Bad Dudes. I think this is gonna be the only extended playthrough of any particular game. We're just gonna skim through the rest of it, but... The one thing I will say about Bad Dudes on the Pixel Player is that the controls... Again, the quality of the buttons and stuff like that is not that great, but the controls have seen a bit of a boost. On the NES version, you pressed B to jump and A to punch, which is contrary to the usual norm of A jumps and B does whatever. But because the buttons on this thing are flipped, you have proper controls, so now the the jump button and the attack button are in their usual place, so you can play this like a normal NES game would play, I guess, I suppose, if that's the right analogy. But in any event, uh, the quality of the buttons aren't great, but at the very least, they're responsive. I'm pretty sure that once I'm done uh, playing through all these 300-plus games, uh, my tune will change, no doubt, but regardless... Uh, a uh, fairly decent quality uh, cloning, I guess. I, I guess it's more comparable to, uh, there's uh, Karnoff, our old buddy, old pal Karnoff. It's a neat little trick I like to do, is like, I like to change the lanes. So keep them at bay. And, uh, it, uh, that usually helps. See, Karnoff's not a bad dude. I don't know why Karnoff's such a bad dude in this game. Probably because the, the, he has a worse game than they do. I've never played Karnoff, though. Anyways. So that's Bad Dudes. I will, maybe I'll slip in some NES footage along the way to give you a brief comparison between the two, but, uh... I don't know. Well, it seems alright to me. But, uh, we'll do a quick comparison, if necessary, I guess. Anyways, on to the next game. Next game on the chopping block is Breakthrough, a shooting game where you drive a jeep or all-terrain vehicle and you have to blow stuff up. Unfortunately, I'm not quite good at this game, but I, I could never figure out the controls on this thing. And, um... Because, you know, normally you check the enclosed instruction manual, but you don't have the enclosed instruction manual. Anyways, this is me experimenting with the controls. I am not at all good at this game, because... See, you know, if you can't get through that... By the way, the flickering is due to the, uh, the AV cable not being properly seated. So, but it's the only cable I have, and there I don't go again. You know what, this is painful to watch. Anyways, Breakthrough, it's a great game if you can get into it, and if you can't... Well, there's plenty of other games you could play, such as... Caveman Ninja, otherwise known as Joe and Mac. Again, this is based on the NES version. And Caveman Ninja has been the subject of a Russian hack of where they turned this into a Super Mario game. I think I have this on one of my Famicom uh, multi-card things. So it's kind of a treat to play the original Caveman Ninja or Joe and Mac NES version unaltered and unhindered. Though it might be on the uh, the other things or something like that. Uh, this is a game that I'm also not that good at. <laughs> Uh, probably because I haven't spent too much time on it. I probably spent like a whole of five minutes and that's probably not enough to get through the game. But I've heard good things about this game. So anyways, here's a brief bit of footage of me sucking and we'll move on to something else, I guess. Who's up for some Heavy Barrel? Which is another, you know, top-down shooting game where you control a commando and you go through terrain and you shoot things and you pick up things and you collect power-ups and things of that nature and it's... All sorts of fun, though still very challenging. Might spend a little more time on this one one of these days, but for now, some brief footage of me just, you know, fiddling around with the gameplay and the controls and all that jazz. Uh, fun little tidbit. 
This was another victim of a hack job where they turned the uh, commando characters into chipmunks. They try to pass it off as a Chip and Dale game. Another game in the Chip and Dale series, which were platformers and, and stuff, and you don't care. Anyways, moving on to the next game because I don't want to spend too much time on this device. Next up, we've got Side Pocket, a pool game of sorts. You know, I expected a little more impact, but uh, hey, I got one in, I, so that's something. Uh, this is uh, an interesting pool game of sorts, though I prefer mine to be on the moon, since I could actually play that one. Anyways, next. Next up we have B-Wings, a common game you would find on numerous NES multi-carts, anything with 100 games, 115 games in one, you'd often find B-Wings on there, and this is kind of a neat little... Kind of neat for me, personally, to see this game in an official capacity being released. Even if it is on a kind of rubbish handheld. But in any event, it's kind of a neat gimmick. You start the game as you've just seen. You pick your wings, and each wings has a set of firepower. And each wing also serves as an additional hit point. And you just roam around these similar looking stages with these checkerboard stages. And you just blow through them. It's a nice game. I wouldn't mind doing a full video on this one game alone. And that's as far as I'll go, because we've got to get through... 300 more other games and shit next next up on the list is karate champ one of the earliest instances of the one-on-one -on -one fighting game and there's no other way for me to describe this game as other than it's pure shit but there's plenty of people that have already told you how shit this game is so i'll save myself the energy and save you the time and we'll move on to something a little more pleasant such as Burger Time, the arcade classic where you control a chef going around stomping on burgers to make the burgers, all the while avoiding the food items that are alive and out to get you because your practices of making burgers are rather unsanitary and stuff. It's a fun game, never really could get into it because I'm kind of crap at it, but eh, whatever. It's the one last decent game on the collection before everything goes straight to hell because it's the last featured game of the 8 Data East entries. And the rest of it, well, no, well, let's find out. But So now that we got the official games out of the way, let's check out the rest of the cheap crap. And we're going to start off with Curly Monkey 2. Is there a Curly Monkey 1? Who knows? Who cares? Anyways, this is a, a typical side-scrolling platform game where you control a slow-moving monkey character thing. And you shoot a boomerang to kill enemies and you try not to touch the enemies. This game has an interesting idea in which you could warp from the overworld to the underwater underworld thing. And you could go back and forth and... I haven't quite figured out the premise because the, I've been going to the right for the most part and I don't know if there's an end to this level. Because I haven't played that far enough, but from the bit that I played... Eh... It, it, it's kind of a, a, a slow, plodding, kind of boring little game, but uh... Perhaps one of the more, perhaps a, far, a fairly uh, inoffensive one, I guess. I suppose. Uh, I might, I might give this a little more of a look somewhere down the line in the future. But uh, for now, uh, eh, it's okay. Next up on the cutting board is Cut Fruit. It's a game where you play as a badass-looking, slow-moving ninja and you cut fruit, and that's. Pretty much the whole game, you move back and forth very slowly, you cut fruit, you move on to another background, you avoid the bombs that occasionally fall from the sky, and that's all there really is to it. It's not a bad looking game, I guess, <laughs> but uh, not the most exciting game either, so uh, there's not much to say here, eh, and, and, and the annoying looping 10 second tune in the background as well, kind of. Next. Next up we have Jan Ken Punch, and this is a fairly simple game where you have two people playing rock, paper, scissors, and you gotta determine which side wins. And uh, the faster you do it, the more points you get, and uh, it's not very fun, it's not very exciting. Uh, next. Next up on the list, we have Thunder Man, and I want you to admire the background tune in the background. I 
I hope you folks enjoyed that song because that's going to be playing throughout the entirety of this game. Anyways, you play as Thunderman, a character clearly modeled after Batman for the NES. You even have the boomerang attack and the enemies die the same way, although that kick is kind of unique. Anyways, this has the makings of a fairly fun side-scrolling platform game where you fight bad guys and you use your boomerangs and your, your martial arts to kill people. It's It has the makings of a good game, it looks pretty good, and uh, I don't know, I, 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 I want to say I had fun with this one. It's not that bad of a game. The only thing that really kills it is, aside from the repetitive music, your character moves fairly slow and uh, you know the enemy placement kind of... Um, Actually, it's the slow movement of your character that kills it completely. And it's too bad because it looks it has the makings of a fine game and uh, even has multiple levels. I played to the second level and it has a different background, which is nice. You know, graphics look nice for the most part. And this one's not bad. I wouldn't mind revisiting this for a, a separate uh, video thing. But for now, eh, it's alright. Next. Next up on the chopping block, we have Vanguard which is a tank game where you drive a tank around and blow stuff up. At least that's the theory. It's based on an old arcade game from Konami called Jackal, which made its way over to the NES, except Jackal is a much more action-packed and fast-paced game than Vanguard, which is slow, plodding, and not all that exciting. But Vanguard gives you a life meter, so that's something. Vanguard on the Pixel Player is much more colorful than your typical NES fare, I have a device called the Dream Gear Retro Play, which is more akin to those pirated NES clone system with a bunch of games, and it also has Vanguard on there, but Vanguard on that system looks like a proper NES game, at least in terms of the colors, not so much in terms of quality. So whatever this thing is doing to enhance the colors on these things, I'll admit Vanguard looks better on the Pixel Player. If only it played and sounded better, it would have been a plus, but as it is... Eh. Eh. Meh. Next up we have Battle Plan, a scrolling shooter similar in vain to 1942-1943 or any other scrolling shooter with airplanes and stuff. That's fairly basic. You have some power-ups, you have some terrain, you have bosses to fight. The bullets are sometimes hard to make out because they blend in with the background, but other than that, it's okay. Fairly harmless, kind of repetitive at times, but eh, it's something. The tune's kind of annoying though, but that's to be expected. Game number 15 on the Pixel Player is Champion Boat. Simply put, take the old arcade game Super Sprint and swap the cars with boats and give it shit controls and you have Champion Boat. Enough said. Next. Next game is Curly Monkey, the prequel to Curly Monkey 2. Why this game didn't show up earlier is... Uh, I don't know, but in any event, it's like the other game that we looked at earlier except with smaller sprites and stuff. Fairly basic, fairly boring platformer, and again, the flipped controls might be an issue, but for the most part, eh, it is what it is. Next. With a new game comes a new page, and that's Enchanter, game number 17, where you control an Enchanter type person, you have to kill enemies, you have to collect keys to move on to the next level, and do the same thing all over again. Getting keys involve opening these chests, but I don't know how quite to do that because the game doesn't quite explain it to you. Mind you, a lot of games don't explain it to you, and the manual doesn't really tell you how to play these games, which is unfortunate. The one weird thing about this game that I will say it right off the bat are the controls. To attack, you press the A and B buttons to attack either left or right. Because the buttons are flipped in this version, you know, the directions are flipped, so instinctively you want to attack on the left, you press the button on the right, and the button on the right attacks on the left, and it's all confusing. And, and, and what does it matter? Um, I got nothing. Next. Next game on the list is Superhero, where you play as a superhero with a goofy face. That's all I got. Anyways, you play a character and you could, you know, it's a side-scrolling platform game. You move around the level, you collect power-ups to give you extra weapons and abilities and stuff like that. It's nothing too detailed, nothing elaborate, but it's a... Novel idea, if nothing else. Uh, the controls kind of hampered the experience, as to be expected, but, uh... Eh, eh could be, could have been worse. Could have been worse. Our next game is Amusement Park 2, where you control a rodent creature thing as he's crossing a tightrope and you have to jump through the hoops and...
try to avoid the electrical hazards, and it's basically similar to the old game Circus Charlie, except Circus Charlie is a much better game, but at least this game gives you a life meter, so that's something. Eh. 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 These next games are self-explanatory, so I'll blow through these rather quickly. Simply put, backgammon is backgammon. Backstroke is the backstroke stage from track and field, hypersports, hyperolympics, whatever you want to call it. Balloon Labyrinth is a shitty maze game with a character that moves like a sloth and passages that you can barely fit through. Breaststroke, butterfly stroke, they're swimming stages from the hypersports track and field series. Checkers is self-explanatory. Chinese checkers is self-explanatory, assuming you know how to play that damn thing. And Crazy Eights is cards. Now that we got that stuff out of the way, let's move on to the next proper game, which is... Defire, featuring not Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury. This game confused me at first because I thought it was just a straight up, like, uh, take on Frogger, where you uh, jump on these ropes, you avoid the uh, obstacles, and you get to the thing. What I missed out on the first time around was that what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to grab these bomb things on the bottom right of the screen, and then you make your way to the top, and you place each of the bombs on the thing, so you gotta go up and down. It makes it somewhat different from a Frogger-type game. And, uh... Eh. Once you grasp your head around the concept, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's something at least. It's something different from the usual fare, and, uh, that's all I got, really. Next. Next up, we have Deformable. Deformable, featuring a nice, colorful title screen. And then we get this dull-looking overhead racing game where you race against the computer to try and reach the finish line first without crashing into anything. You have some power-ups here and there, but for the most part, it's a kind of a rubbish racing game that made you wish you were playing something else instead. Next, two more quick games. First up, we have Distinction. Spot the differences between the two pictures. And then we have Dominoes. It's, it's Dominoes. What else do you want me to tell you? Next. Next game on the list is Fateful Battle. A game where you control a biplane looking thing and you have to blow up all the cannons on this battleship to claim victory and move on to the next level. And there are multiple stages in this game, except all it does is make the pipes a little longer so there's more room for you to move around in. Which is weird because you're flying a plane, uh, supposedly, but this is just a reskin of some other game that we'll look at somewhere down the line in this video. For now, let's move on to the next game. Freestyle Stroke is another one of these swimming contests. Jesus Christ, how many of these stupid swimming games are there in this thing? Probably more to come, but I digress. Next up we have Frontal Fire, where you control a turret of a tank and you shoot other tanks and other vehicles. Basically a poor man's battle zone without any motion, and that's all there is to it, really. Next. Next up we have Fruit Boxes, a puzzle game of some sort. The basic premise behind the game is fairly straightforward. You and the computer take turns building walls on this grid, and if you manage to close out an area, whether it be a square or more, you fill it with fruit. The game continues until the entire area has been filled with fruit, of which there are two varieties, one representing yourself and one representing the computer, and whoever has the most fruit wins. It's a fairly interesting premise, but the game is a little slow and plotting and, well, you'd much rather be playing this with a friend than against the computer, who seems to be two steps ahead of you, so... Eh, it's something, I guess. Our next game on the list is Galligant, or Galligant, or whatever, to, whatever you want to call it. This is one of several single-screen shooters where you control a tank thing and planes fly by and you have to shoot them before they shoot you or ram into you or whatever the case may be. And after a certain amount of time, you move on to the next level where nothing changes. This is one of several shooters that follows this basic template. They just change the graphics in later iterations, but we'll look at those when we get to them, of course. Next game is Greedy, and I'll let you guess which game this is supposed to be. It's Snake. Nuff said. Next. Hey, look everyone, it's Star! Wow, that song sounds vaguely familiar. I wonder if the game plays familiar as well. Yeah, it's Defender 2 on NES with the snake thing of some sort. Next. 
Next game we have Heroes Mice. Basically, catch the mutant rabbit things, avoid the bombs. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, pretty boring. Next. Next up we have Heroes Mice 2. Pretty much the same concept as Heroes Mice, except now you have to punch rats in order for them to land safely, otherwise you lose health. And also you have scrolling levels, but not much more than that. Next game on the list is Homing Chicken, which I assumed was going to be an Angry Birds knockoff sort of game. But instead, it's this game where you control bridges and you have to guide the birds, which don't look like chickens by the way, to the other side from the top to bottom. And uh, this music is annoying by the way, but I needn't tell you that because most of the music in these games are relatively annoying and not good, and repetitive, and they make my ears bleed, and I should probably get that checked out. I'll probably do that later, but right now, I've got to look at more of these stupid games. Next! Next up, we have Invincible Girl. A relatively simple shooter with a somewhat interesting premise. You control the Invincible Girl on the bottom of the screen, and your main goal is to clear the screen of black things. The catch here is you're not shooting at the black things, but rather the ice blocks above, which, if you shoot at the block, it'll... I've played this game when it was called Ice Ocean on the Multicart thing. It's a nice code game. I did a thing called Nice Code Week back in August or September or whatever it was. I've played this game before. This is the same game. It's just reskinned. A common ailment with a number of these games on the pixel player thing. But we'll get to those later. Next. Next game is Irrigate, or Irritate, either way works. You control a pot of water, and you basically have to water the flowers so that they'll stay in the squares, in the holes, or whatever you want to call them. This game makes more sense if you visualize the pot of water as a hammer and the flowers as nails since a similar game of this design used those graphics, and I'd imagine the same annoying music, but uh, whatever, moving on. Our next game is Jig Chick, which could perhaps be best described as the poor man's Cubert, where you control a little character and you hop on cubes to change the color of the surface, and once you've done all that, you move on to the next level, which to this game's credit, it has multiple stage layouts of different varieties, so there's some extended play value here, but yeah, it's Cubert. It plays all right. It's, it's not great or anything. The music's kind of annoying, but hey, it's something, I guess. Our next game is Amusement Park Jumping Kid where you hop over frogs and elephants and rabbits and in one stage you walk a tightrope while hopping over frogs in a side-scrolling platform game. Fairly basic, fairly straightforward game that's somewhat reminiscent of the old Konami game Circus Charlie and not much else to say there. Our next game is Jumping Wheeled, a somewhat rubbish side-scrolling platformer where you hop on platforms to get to the other side while collecting these metal gimmicks. Not much else to say here. Next. Knocking. Whack-a-mole. Knock it. Whack-a-mole. Moving right along, we've got Mad Christmas, or Mad Xmas. Simply put, catch all the gifts and candies, avoid the bombs and demon creatures. Boring. Next. Look out, everybody. It's the Man in Red, where you play as a much younger Santa Claus during his time with the South Pole Militia as he fends off against the Bug Army. Another one of these stationary shooters that's boring and not all that interesting, but check out the Man in Red and his thrusting action. It's about all I got from this game. Merry Christmas, everybody. Well, we're off by a couple months, but you get the idea. Anyways, you control Santa Claus. An elf will drop a gimmick on the floor, and you have to bring it back to the uh, little house there. And, uh... How do I do this? And, uh... I, okay, I guess I gotta go home. And something, and... Uh... I'm stumped. Moving right along. Oh, there we go. I don't know what I did, but we did something. 
Next up, we have Mike Pig. Control the little pig, grab all the cheese before time runs out. Meh. Next. Our next game is Monster Chaser, which doesn't even have a title screen. Brilliant. Anyways, you chase the monster and you catch it. The idea here is that your character is constantly moving until you reach a fork in the road, at which point you pick a direction, but you can't go backwards. Because that would defeat the purpose of chasing, I guess. It's, um... It's a thing that happens to exist on this device, and let's just leave it at that. Our next game is Motor Boat. Another rubbish overhead racing game. No thank you. Our next game is Octopus. A game where you have to gather all the coins to unfreeze a trident and use it to kill the octopus. You can only cross between land and sea through these ports here. And there's multiple stage layouts, but that's about it, really. Nothing special. Oops. Now this is a hidden gem here. Outrun, the classic seg- uh, Oh, oh, wait, this is not the Outrun I'm looking for. This is basically Frogger in reverse. Instead of going from bottom to top, you go from top to bottom, and that's all there is to it. Next. Next up, we have Pattern Maker. Match the top half with the bottom half, that scroll on the side of the screen. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Meh. Next up, we have Pole Axe. A fairly basic horizontal scrolling shooter where... You have a couple power-ups that you could pick up along the way, and there's not much else to it. Not very exciting, but hey, it's something, I suppose. Our next game is Pong Pong, a game where you have bumper cars and you control the red car, and you have to bump the blue cars into the holes to kill them and win. Unfortunately, you'll be spending more time fighting the awful controls than you will the other cars. Next up, we have Prey. Drop bombs on a convoy, avoid the ones shooting at you. Snore. Next. Next up we have Puppet Show. First, try to shoot your balls at the prizes while avoiding the little creature thing, and then you take control of the creature thing and prevent the computer from scoring on the prizes. Yeah, there's not much to say about this one. <laughs> yeah. Next game on the list is Repair Urgently, where you assume control of repair works and you have to repair the road and clear away obstacles to get this car from point A to point B before time runs out. I appreciate the concept because I live in a city with plenty of potholes and road repairs are a little lax at times, but unfortunately the game is very easy. 60 seconds isn't much, but it's more than enough time to solve the possible problems which are very, very easy to figure out given the choices that you have. So, uh, there are multiple levels, but that's about all there is to it. Next. Reversey is... well, it's Reversey. Road Mound is that pipeline game that I don't care for. Slots is a slot machine that's absolutely pointless. Snowball is that block-pushing game that appears everywhere and nobody plays. And Spades is Cards. That was time well spent. And while Speedman might sound like an interesting game, it's just another one of those overhead racing games that permeate throughout this console and is not all that interesting to play. Oh well. Next up, we have Spring Jester, where you control a ant bug thing, whatever it's supposed to be. You hop on these platforms and you make your way to the top. This game confounds me because the controls are kind of awkward. You can sort of hold the jump button to jump upwards, and you could sort of use the D-pad to aim your jumps left or right. And then you have this floaty descent, and sometimes you touch the platforms and you'll still fall through anyways, and... Well, um... Yar. Next. Next game on the list is Swing, where you control a blue slime ball creature thing, and you have to collect all the gimmicks from a stage while avoiding other gimmicks that are out to kill you. Between the slow movement of your character, the somewhat pixel-perfect collision detection that makes narrow passages difficult to go through, this game is not very fun, it's kind of dull, and unfortunately we'll be coming across this style of game more often than not. Our next game is Symbol Puzzle, basically a tile game where you pick two tiles of the same type to make them disappear from the board, 
and you do it before time runs out. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward. Not much to go into here. Hey, look everyone, it's Team Star. Help Team Star save the pink balls from the pipes and try to avoid the orange balls that will pop up on occasion because they're decoys and try to avoid the black things that will fly by because they will kill you. And that's all there is to it. Really, there's not much else to say. It's a fairly simplistic and fairly boring game. Moving right along. Our next game is Tower. A game where you climb to the top of the tower while avoiding obstacles and things of that nature. Fairly straightforward, otherwise boring. Next game. Our next game is UFO, where you control a little UFO thing and you basically have to collect these glowing orb things in order to grow into a bigger UFO while avoiding these other gimmicks. I kind of like the idea on paper, but in terms of execution, much like the rest of the games on this uh, collection, with the exception of the eight main eventers, so to speak, it's uh, rather lacking and uninteresting, which is a bit of a shame, because something like this could be interesting, but not when it's made by these people. Our next game is Unusual Space, another game with no title screen. You control the red dude, and you basically have to shoot your homing shots at your opponent, who will also shoot a couple projectiles to bounce around the screen and also home in on you with his body. Uh, dull, boring, not all that exciting. And despite the fact that there are multiple opponents, they all pretty much do the same thing, and battles pretty much play out the same way, so, uh, yar. Our next game is Warrior, and you've got to admire that Photoshop of Tom Cruise wearing a funky helmet. And I can tell it's Tom Cruise because I've seen this poster before. Exhibit A. You basically control this warrior who uses his zipline to switch lanes. And I'm guessing the idea is that you kill a certain number of enemies and then the boss shows up and you kill it and you move on to the next stage. I'm assuming that's the case because I haven't really played that much of this game because it's not that exciting, it's boring, and uh, I'd much rather be playing something else. And so we shall right now. Worm Dream. You remember that swing game we looked at seven games ago? Well, it's back now, except now you play as a worm and the graphics are less than stellar. Same layout and everything, same gameplay, same kind of rubbish. Next. Okay, another rush of quick games. Archery is the hyper sports variety. Caribbean is just poker. Crystal has you digging through crystals and not much else. Discus throw is another track and field thing. An Earth Fighter is the same generic single screen shooter we've seen a dozen games ago, and I've only played 10 seconds of this, and that's all she wrote. Next game is Falling, another single screen shooter where you shoot down guys parachuting from the sky before they land on the ground and you lose lives or health or whatever. One button shoots while the other flips your tank around so you can aim a little better. I guess that's the theory. It's a nice way of introducing variety to these single screen shooters, but at the end of the day, it's the same old shit, and not much else to it. Next. Five days, yet another single screen shooter, albeit one with a bit of a twist. You control an infantryman who has to stand his ground and defend his post against other slow moving soldiers. The caveat is that you cannot move because you have a grounded weapon, and you can only shoot in five directions. Also, aiming is slow and unreliable. It's uh, something different for the gameplay department, but unfortunately, just because it's different doesn't mean it's any better. And sometimes the game slows down and you have this annoying tune and, well, why am I still playing this? Next. Ghost Palace, yet another single screen shooter. But at least in this one, you could walk and jump. Basically, avoid the big fireballs while shooting the little fireballs. That's pretty much all there is to it. Not very exciting. And the music is annoying, but you don't need me to tell you that. Our next game is Girl. Just Girl, because we need a game for the ladies. Unfortunately, it's a fairly rubbish puzzle game where you have this girl roam around the board, and every time you hit a smiley face thing, you get to determine whether you get to go left or right. Other than that, eh, didn't keep my interest very long, so I just moved on to something else right afterwards. Our next game is Harbor, where, in a bit of a twist, you use your crosshairs to aim and shoot down planes while avoiding their projectiles by not shooting at the projectiles because that's how you lose lives. Once you shoot down a certain number of planes, you move on to the next stage, which is pretty much the same thing. Hey, it's something different. It's not the usual single screen shooter like the last couple of games that we looked at. 
And, uh... Doesn't make it more exciting, but it is something different. For once. Next up we have High Jump, which is pretty self-explanatory, but let's watch the panda fail at this High Jump event. Truly riveting stuff. Next. Next game on the list is Hunter Alone, and despite the somewhat cool looking title screen, this is the game you're getting for Hunter Alone. Yet another single screen shooter where you slowly walk and jump and you avoid the rocks while destroying the pods on top. <sighs> next. We're gonna skip the next couple of games, but let's just look at them quickly. Javelin and Long Jump, they're both track and field games, so let's move on to Loo Nation which is an overhead driving game where you have to reach the finish line before time runs out. This seems somewhat more competently done compared to what we've seen before on this portable collection because it's basically a ripoff of the Konami game Road Fighter, except a little more rubbish and it has a rubbish tune in the background and uh, it makes me wish I was playing Road Fighter, which is quite an achievement to be honest with you because the last thing I would want to play is Road Fighter because it's not that great of a game to be honest with you, but... Hey, different strokes for different folks, I suppose. Next. Next up is something a little different. Magic Pond, which is, for all intents and purposes, a fishing game with different lures and different pieces of bait, and you could fish to your heart's content. Unfortunately, I'm not much of a fishing person, so I can't really tell you how good this game could be compared to other fishing experiments or fishing experiences or whatever the case may be, but hey, if you like fishing, Here's a game for you. Our next game is Guard Radish, probably the most advanced game on the Pixel Player thus far. Just listen to the sound quality on this thing. See, not quite NES quality. How a game like this appeared on the Pixel Player about 90 plus games in is a mystery, almost as much as a gameplay as it at first. The idea is you're supposed to keep the moles from the, from the mole creatures from eating the radish. Wasn't sure how to do that because I figured you'd just grab them or you use the bombs on top. Turns out you place the bombs on the flagpoles and then it causes the moles to grow and you they explode and, and that's it, I guess. Um, this game baffles me a bit. Not just in terms of the gameplay, but just in terms of the sound quality, which is odd because it, you know, but eh, whatever, next game. Our next game is Fishing Challenge, or Atlantic Fishing Tournament 2009. And yes, it's another fishing game. I've already expressed my feelings on fishing in general a couple games back, so we're going to move on to the next game, which is 110 Hurdles. Another track and field game. Moving right along to the next game. Shark! You control a little fish and you have to eat other little fish while avoiding the big fish. It's the most visually intriguing game of the bunch, at least in terms of the background graphics. Not so much in terms of the gameplay. And then we have Cookies Labyrinth, a maze game where you have to collect all the cookies from the stage before time runs out. For some reason, the cookies glow. I don't know why. It's probably some special dough. Your one main adversary in this game are the narrow passages because they're hard to fit through because your character is just so damn big. There are multiple stages, but after a couple, I just got bored and moved on to something else. Shot puts another track and field game swift riders another rubbish racing game Gee, why do i even bother teleports vaguely interesting because you have this teleport gimmick where you go on the teleporter you teleport to another part of the stage and then you try to avoid the uh moving things while collecting the stationary things unfortunately the controls aren't that great and neither is collision detection and yeah next our next game is Thin Ice, where you control a mutant rabbit thing. You basically skate around the ice rink or whatever it's called while avoiding the little creature behind you that's going to be chasing you no matter how far you go to or, or, or something. I don't know. Boring. Hey, speaking of boring, here's another track and field game. Triple Jump. Yay! And then here's Twin Carts, where you it's basically the, the old pick two cards of the same type. Clear them from the board and stuff. And then you got Twin Fish, which is pretty much the same thing. And, um, yeah. Next. Our next game is Aether Mission. Basically a vertical scrolling shooter, which is something different for once. 
but this one has the most annoying sound effects in the history of the universe as demonstrated right now. Yep. You know what this game reminds me of? There's an old Atari 7800 video game called Planet Smashers, which I know of because it's one of the games featured on the original Atari flashback system from 2004. The thing about the original flashback is that unlike today's flashbacks, that system was essentially an NES on a chip, so it basically took 20 Atari games and turned them into little NES games, and Planet Smashers sounded precisely like this. So I'm guessing they took that port, turned it into this, simplified the gameplay somewhat, and that's about it really. It's not that fantastic of a game, and to be fair, Planet Smashers wasn't that great to begin with. And, um, that's all I got. That's the only interesting thing about Aether Mission, to be honest with you, was that it reminded me of this other game on this other console, and it's almost on par in terms of quality, but I digress. Hey girl, you wanna play 100 Meter Dash? Which is another rubbish track and field game that, uh... I'm not even going to play because I'm using one hand to hold the camcorder. I didn't show off the screen on this thing, did I? This is what the screen looks like. It looks alright. There's also a thing where you could make the uh, buttons glow in the dark if you wanted to. You can't really see it all that well because the lights are on, but uh, I assure you the glow in the dark isn't, uh, isn't that much better to be honest with you. And that's the only reason I would justify spending one minute on... Uh, 100 meter dash, which is another track and field game, because otherwise I wouldn't have bothered. But hey, at least you got to see the screen in action, for better or worse. The speaker's not bad either, but it's not that great on the hands, to be honest with you. Anyways, back to gameplay. Our next game is Magic Johnny, another side-scrolling thing. See, you remember that Enchanter game that we looked at about 100 games ago? Well, it's here again, except it doesn't look as nice, and instead of an enchanter character, you have a little kid with horns on his head and a flower for a weapon. I don't know, just go with it. This one does have an opening cutscene, but it doesn't really say much. Next. Our next game is a driving game called Seething, this one taking inspiration from the Data East classic Bump and Jump. Which is funny, because this is a console with Data East games, official games from Data East, and you could have added Bump and Jump on there, which is a Data East game featured on another compilation for the NES. So you could have had an actual Bump and Jump game on here, but instead you have the poor man's Bump and Jump, which boggles the mind. Whatever. Next. Next up we have Aether Cruiser, which is of course another space shooter. This one a sort of hybrid third person perspective overhead space shooter type thing where you have asteroids fr shooting from the sky and aliens shooting above and you have a radar it's it's kind of interesting but not really interesting it's it's something different at least i'll give them that much but that's pretty much all i'll give them is that much cuz not much else yeah next Next game on the list is Aim Cruise which after a somewhat unique opening sequence reveals Yet another single screen space shooter that hurts my brain. Moving right along. Next game on the list is Animal Blocks. See, you remember that symbol puzzles puzzle game that we looked at about 100 games ago where you have to match, you have to collect two tiles of the same type? Well, it's here again, except now instead of strange symbols, you have animal faces. And why I'm happy this sort of thing exists for multiple games because it means I could go through the list a hell of a lot faster than usual. Next. Our next game is Animal Contest. Fuck off, we're skipping this one. Next up we have Balloon Shoot. Shoot as many balloons as you can within the time allotted. Pretty self-explanatory. Not very exciting. Next. Next game is Brother Ball and let's admire this opening introduction to the title screen. Aw, oh, look at those cute critters. They're so adorable and look at that spotlight. Wow. This is the most impressive introduction sequence that I've seen. Oh, and by the way, do you remember that Team Star game that we looked at a few games ago? It's here again, except now you're playing as balls instead of stars. 
Next. Our next game is Bug Catcher, where you play as a bug catching mutant creature thing, and basically the whole idea is you catch all the bugs that are the same color as you and you avoid all the rest. Once you fill the meter, you move on to the next level where you change into a different color and you catch the bugs that are the same as the new color. Pretty straightforward, pretty boring, nothing too exciting. Next game is Busy Bar, where you are a bartender who has to serve his clientele. You pick the drink and you give it to the customer that wants that drink and then you do the same thing with other drinks and customers and then you wonder why you're not playing something like Tapper, which is much more interesting and fun than whatever the hell this is supposed to be. Our next game is Candy Workshop. At this point in time, my brain completely and utterly shut down because I couldn't figure out how this game worked. If I spent a little more time on it, I probably would have figured it out. But after about 30 seconds, I turned the system off, I went to bed, I didn't pick up the system until another week or so, at which point, well, I had fully recovered, I, I, I guess, I suppose, but, um, yeah, whatever. Next. Our next game is Climbing, and we look at, oh, 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 well, that's unfortunate. Anyways, you try to climb to the top, avoid all the obstacles, um, boring. Next. Next up is a game called Con Test, and oh, by the way, do you remember that unusual space game we looked at ages ago where you play as one jabroni and you have to shoot another jabroni with your homing missiles while avoiding his homing missiles? Well, wouldn't you know it, it's back again. Except now you play as a spaceship where you have to shoot another spaceship with your homing missiles and stuff like that. This game does offer something different because the boss has two life meters and you have to drain both of them in order to kill it. And, um, that's it. That's all I got. It's the same shit. It's not any better. Next. Next game on the list is Shoot, and I can already tell it's just gonna be- Yeah, yeah, it's just Keat Shooting from Track and Field, Hyper Sports, Hyper Olympics, whatever you want to call it. It's a common trick for multi-cart developers to take a game that has multiple game modes, like Track and Field has eight different mini-games, you take each of those eight mini games and you turn them into individual games, and that's a trick that they would use to inflate the numbers a bit. It's all fine and dandy, I suppose, but at the end of the day, it's eight mini games that make up a single package, and well. Um, yeah. Next. Next game on the list is Crystal Blast. Basically, you control a bird plane thing, and you have to drop bombs on these crystal ball towers to blow them up. And you gotta do this before your plane touches one of these balls, because if that happens, the game ends. But if you clear the screen, you move on to the next level and that sort of thing. The problem is that you can only drop one bomb at a time, and your shots have to be precise and land on top of the balls, because if it skims the side, it won't register as a hit. So collision detection is particularly picky here. But then again, at the end of the day, it's not like you're going to play this game for very long because there's a lot more interesting stuff to play on here, and this isn't one of them. Next game on the list is Danger Bridge, where you have to control bridges in order to get these critters to cross from point A to point B without them falling over. It's a lot like that chicken game we looked at about 100 games ago, and there's not much else to say there. Next. Next game on the chopping block is a game called Dejectile, which is basically a Bomberman ripoff where you control a little green dude and you lay bombs all over the place to try and clear out the screen of all, all the enemies and stuff. That's pretty much all there is to it, really. It's just a Bomberman ripoff, and uh, yeah, next. Next on the list is Difference. Two pictures spot the differences. Enough said. Next. Our next game is Egg Contest, a game where you catch eggs. And that's it. You just catch eggs. Yep. Next game on the list is Nature Clan Escape Way, where you play as a stack of balls and I have no clue how this works. 
I am befuddled by how this works, so we're going to move on to the next game, which is... Fairy's Treasure. A game where you shoot a fairy by aiming the dot thing that's on the bottom at a direction, and you shoot the fairy and the fairy will pick up the treasure and that's about it really eh 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 next game on the list is fated pirate and i'm gonna admit something here i don't know how to play this game i'm guessing it's a turn-based strategy game of sorts a somewhat simplistic one but i just keep shooting and dying and i have no idea what i'm doing so, uh, we're gonna move on to the next game, shall we? Next game is Final Blood. And, say, do you remember that frontal battle game that we looked at ages ago where you're controlling a turret and you shoot trucks? Well, it's here again. And unlike other games where they just take the same game and change the graphics around, they only made the bare minimum of changes here, so it's pretty much the same game visually. Unbelievable. They didn't even try with this one. Next. Our next game is Fish Story. Where you play as a fish and you eat small fish and avoid the big fish. Which is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, there's not much else. It's just a game where you play as a fish and... Oh my god, that 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 is gruesome. That... that is, kids could be playing... Oh, fuck me. Did we really need that? I'm scarred for life. Not really. Next. Next game on the list is Fling Ball. And say, do you remember that puppet show game we played a while ago with the robots and stuff? Well, it's, uh, well, 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 you know. Next. Our next game is Fruit Gift. Basically match the fruit with the appropriate outline. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty boring, whatever. Anyways, let's get to the next game, which is... Ghost Castle, which has been a subject of a prior video as part of the Nice Code Week event last year. So I won't spend too much time talking about the game here, but you control a guy, you kill monsters, and position yourself in the right spot, and you could just play the whole game with pressing one button, and that's it. Meh. All right, we're going to skip Gin Rummy and Go Fish because they're card games and pretty popular ones for the most part, and they're pretty self-explanatory. Next. All right, next game on the list is Golden Bird. And we're going to look at this opening introduction to give you an idea of how this game works. You're playing at this little blue thing with a hat. You free the bird from its cage, and then the bird turns into the title screen. Brilliant. Basically, the whole idea is you're freeing all the birds from their cages, and you do that before the time runs out, you move on to the next level. You move slowly, much lower than you did on the title screen, you cannot jump, and you don't seem to have any attacks, so you have to really navigate your way around the level so you avoid the enemies, while, you know, find the best way to free all these birds. It's a slow-moving game because your character is slow, and it's not very exciting, but hey, the idea is kind of interesting at least. So, that's something. Next game on the list is Hammer and Nail. And say, you remember that Irrigate game that we looked at with the watering of the pots and the flowers and stuff? Remember when I said this bit? This game makes more sense if you visualize the pot of water as a hammer and the flowers as nails. Since a similar game of this design used those graphics and... Well, it's that game. Now it has hammers and nails, and it's nowhere near as interesting as I thought it would be, because it's the same game and it wasn't interesting the first time, and the music is even more annoying than the other game. Next. Next game on the list is Hangman, an old paper game where you would guess a word of a number of letters, and for every wrong guess you draw a body part until you end up with a man hanging by a noose, and when this happens before you guess the correct word, well, the game ends and you lose. Works well enough here, but you're better off playing on paper with another player where it's at least more interesting and fun and you have someone to interact with or something, I guess. I don't know. It's Hangman for fuck's sake. It's not all that great. Next game on the list is Happy Match, 
It's a card matching game. Been there, done that. Nothing special, nothing we haven't seen before. Next. Next game on the list is High Card. A card game where you and opponent have a set of cards and you basically draw one card each and whoever has the higher hand claims both cards. And the goal is to claim all your opponent's cards or before he does or she does or whoever the case may be. Anyways, it's this is the game that Animal Contest is based on. A game that we did not look at in this video. But there's a whole other video if you want to look at that for whatever reason. And uh, it was it's important for you to know where that game came from. Actually, it's not important. I just needed to ramble for a bit here. And, and, and something, I don't know. Next. Our next game is Ice Ocean. Which is the subject of a prior Nice Code video thing that I did ages ago. And you control a little mermaid. You shoot at the ice blocks. The ice blocks fall down and hopefully kill some fish on screen. And... And the cycle repeats itself, I guess. We've already seen a similar game like this earlier on, except it was an invincible girl and not a mermaid or whatever the case may be. I don't, I don't know. I don't care. Next. Next game on the list is Island, where you attempt to push all the moving eggs off the island by shooting other eggs on them, and I, I guess that's what you do. The funny thing is, you don't have to clear all the eggs from the island. You just kill a certain number of eggs and you move on to the next stage, which is a different looking island at least. But, eh, 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 that's all I got. Next. Next game on the list is Jump Jump, where you control a mutant bear thing and you have to hop on these platforms to make your way to the top of the, uh, the mountain, all the while admiring the rather seizure inducing waterfall. To its credit, the jumping mechanics is not the greatest in the world, but they do work for the purposes of this game, and it's a rather soothing little game. There's no music, there's very minimal sound effects, most of them which are bad, but it's something, it's something um, functional, I guess, for lack of a better term, and uh, that's all I really got to say. There's not much else to say here, and we've reached the top. Next. Next game on the list is Lattice Winner, and say, do you remember that Fruit Boxes game that we looked at ages ago? Well, it's here again, except now instead of fruit you have shapes, and the graphics look like shit. Well, they look like your typical 8-bit NES graphics, but still, it's not the most appealing thing to look at either way. Let's blow through these next couple of games rather quickly. Lightning is another one of those shitty overhead driving games, racing games, whatever you want to call it. And it has some annoying music. Our next game, Little Witch, is a Defender ripoff with the most seizure-inducing waterfall ever conceived in the history of mankind. Until I bear witness to another seizure-inducing waterfall that will take the cake and whatever the case may be. Magic egg. You, you put eggs into a machine, you make them disappear before they hatch or something. I, I don't know. Mechano is a game where you put shapes on the outlines and you fill them with color, I guess. Something. Next. Next game on the list, it's Metro Mania. And you could never guess what this game is. It's another hack of the road fighter game from Konami. Although this one is somewhat unique in that it gives you four different cars to play with. Not that it makes much of a difference because it's still the same old rubbish game. Next. Next up we have Mirror Devil World and I have absolutely no idea how to play this game. Yeah, all I know is that you have three mirrors, they shoot at you and you could make blocks and stuff and I don't know. Next. Our next game, Mouse Snare, can be best described as one word. Minesweeper. You've played Minesweeper on Windows, you've played Mouse Snare. It's pretty much the same game, except instead of a computer mouse, you're using a D-pad. And uh, that's it, really. Next. Next game on the list is Mowing, where you have to mow all the grass from each of the lawns. I already did a video on this game, so I don't need to retread any territory here, but this is what the game looks like for those who are curious. Just mow the lawn. That's it. Next. Next game on the list is Nut Cracky, which is basically a derivative of the old Atari game Food Fight, where you have to save the princess, 
while avoiding the rat creatures, and the only way to defend yourself is to take some toys and shoot them at the nutcracking rat things and stuff. It's a fairly competent version of Food Fight for all what it's worth, and not much else to say here, so, yep, next. Our next game is Pindable Crystal Ball, and, oh, it's this game again. Next. Next game on the list is Pizza Boy. Deliver pizzas to customers and whatever the case may be or, or something, I don't know. I've played this game already when it had different graphics, so whatever. Next. Our next game on the list is Police Dog Lassie. A game where you control a police dog and you have to dig out all the hidden stolen goods that the uh, thief has hidden while avoiding all the time bombs that will cause you to lose a life or whatever the case may be. It's a simple, straightforward, boring little game. Next. Next game on the list is Police vs. Thief Violent Chasing and Say, do you remember that monster chaser game that we looked at about a hundred games ago? The one where you had to chase a monster and you couldn't go backwards? Well, it's here again. Believe it or not. Except there's no music, there's no sound of any kind, uh, at least as far as I could tell. It's a very silent little game that looks like a crappy NES game, which isn't saying, oh, I've, I think I've heard one sound effect. Who cares? Next. Next game on the list is Polk. And if the title screen doesn't quite give it away, this is indeed a pinball video game. And if you're expecting Polk to have realistic pinball physics, then may I ask, what the fuck is wrong with you people? This game is anything but realistic pinball physics. I'd argue even the shittiest Nintendo game licensed by Nintendo for playing your Nintendo Entertainment System would have way better realistic pinball physics than this game would have. It's, it's, this, is not, this is not a good pinball game and by any stretch of the imagination. And it's over, thank fuck for that. Let's move on to the next game, which is Pulverization. And yes, yes, this is indeed a Battle City knockoff. For those of you who don't know what Battle City is, it's a tank game where you blow up other tanks. Except this one gives you a bit more terrain. It scrolls upwards and uh, it looks slightly prettier. And it has some power-ups here and there. And uh, yeah. That's all I got. Next. Our next game is Rabbit Village, and that rabbit looks vaguely familiar. Yeah, 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 of course. Unfortunately, that rabbit on the title screen looks nothing like the rabbit on screen here. And the rabbit you're controlling basically has to move this contraption where they have to help the escaping rabbits from escaping the escaping thing and escape. That sort of thing while avoiding the wolves and the bombs and stuff. It's a vaguely interesting premise, but much like most of the games on this compilation, not quite interesting in terms of actual execution. But hey, I'm saying a lot more about this game than I have been quite a few of these, so that's something, I guess? Eh, whatever. Next. Next game on the list is Road Worker. And say, do you remember that Repair Urgently game that we looked at ages ago? That nice, colorful Road Repair Work stuff? Well, guess what? It's here again, and it's the exact same game, except now it has standard NES graphics. They're not even trying to disguise this as something else, it's the exact same game. Which is painful. Why am I even... <laughs> uh, whatever, next. Next up we have Sea Maid, a game where you control a sea maid or mermaid, and you collect eggs before you run out of air or something. There are multiple screens of differing configurations, and it's slow, boring, not very exciting, but at this point, is it really that much of a surprise? Next. Next game on the list is Seaport Guarl. I'm guessing it's supposed to be Seaport Guard, but part of the D is missing, so they went with Garl or something, I don't know. Anyways, we've seen this game before earlier on, but I'm not going to bother bringing up the footage. You control a tank, you have to kill all the turrets on this uh, boat. And there are multiple stages, but all the multiple stages really do is just make the walls longer so it gives you less room to maneuver and stuff. So that's a thing. Next. Next game on the list is Sea Wolf. Sea Wolf, where you control the submarine. You use your targeting reticule to blow up battleships with your torpedoes. And then you get bored. 
you lose interest, and you move on to the next game, which is Solitaire, which is much more interesting than Seawolf. Hell, I argue even this dice game that I don't know how to play would be more interesting than Seawolf. Anything is an improvement over Seawolf, let's just put it that way. Our next game is Nature Clan Spring World. I don't know why there are so many Nature Clan games, but there you go. It's another overhead thing where you control your character stiffly, you collect items, but now the you know, there are springs to justify the bouncing objects. Why are there so many of these stupid games? But whatever. Next. Next game on the list is called Submarine. You'd figure you'd be playing as a submarine in this game, but no, you're playing as the boat where you're dropping charges on submarines to kill them. And after you kill a certain number of submarines, you move on to the next stage, which has a different background. Hey, it's an upgrade over that Seawolf game that we played a while ago, so I'll take it. And this one's actually not that bad of a game. It's actually quite fun and enjoyable, despite its simplicity, so I'll take it. Next up, we have Toad in a Hole, and it's Whack-A-Mole. That's it, it's just Whack-A-Mole. There are no toads, there are holes, but it's Whack-A-Mole. The end. Our next game is Toy Factory, a little puzzle game where you have to put the toys in the right baskets so the balls go in the colored balls and the recycling bin is for the other toys and stuff and I guess, I suppose. I, I could go into more depth about how this game works, but honestly, I don't know how this game works beyond what you're seeing on screen. So, eh, whatever. Next. Next game on the list is Utmost Warfare, and wouldn't you know it, it's another space shooter, albeit uh, somewhat different. This one is sort of a hybrid overhead slash behind the third person thing, sort of like a space harrier or afterburner. Although not quite because the lasers still shoot upwards rather than, you know, give it a perspective, but I don't know. It's the thought that counts, I suppose, but not much more than that. Next game on the list is Vigilant, and, well, take a guess what this game is. It's another space shooter, a horizontal space shooter, with gas, which implies a refueling mechanic of some kind. Eh. Next game is the ever-popular Warzone. Okay, it's not really popular. You control a chopper and you deploy soldiers to destroy the turrets above. Once you've sent enough soldiers, the tur one of the turrets will explode, you move on to the next stage, and you do the whole thing all over again. Um... I don't get the point of this game. I, I don't know what this is, but um, it's a thing that happens to be on this system. And, uh, oh, look, I've won. Good. Next. Our next game is Water Pipe. And if this title screen, well, you don't even need a context. It's uh, Pipeline. If you don't know what Pipeline, this is Pipeline. You connect pipes from one end to the other. And, um... Uh, Never been a big fan of Pipeline, I'll be honest with you here, so wasn't that excited to uh, play this for very long. So we're not going to play this for very long. We just played one level. We're going to move on to the next game, which is called Wild Worm. Wild Worm is interesting. You control a worm. You eat enough fruit. You evolve into a bigger worm. And I guess, you know, you eventually turn into a butterfly or something like that. A caterpillar or that, that sort of thing, I guess. You avoid all the wild animals and shit like that. And, uh... Yeah, that's all it is, really. Your, uh, worm thing is too uh, slow to do anything worthwhile, and, um... Why am I even bothering? Next. Next game on the list is Wonder Ball. And I'm gonna tell you something, I have no idea what this game is about. You assume it's shoot the balls in the uh, ho proper colored holes, but uh, sometimes you get points and sometimes you don't. I, I, I don't know, this game confounds me. Next. Next game on the list is Enchanter 2, and say, you remember this game? You remember this game? Well, it's this game again. It's even the same music, Jesus Christ. Next. Next game on the list is Aquarium. Eat the food, avoid the bad stuff, enough said. Next. Our next game is Arena, and we're going to play through the few seconds of footage that I have of this game, because I want you to see... Um, oh, oh, no, I'm dead. Oh, I died. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. Even though I have hit points, or apparently I have uh, hit points. So, the music stops out of nowhere. You have to avoid fireballs. 
I have this sword weapon that's even less effective than the, uh, uh, and uh, the music started up again. I'm dead again. And um, why am I still playing this? Next. Next game on the list is Ass Art. I don't, I don't care what you want to call it. I'll call it Ass Art because that's exactly what it is. Turn the green tiles blue and you get the chip a couple of boulders in order to achieve your goal. And it's a fairly interesting puzzle game by which I mean not fairly interesting. So we're going to move on to the next game. Eh, eh, and that's, uh, the next game is Burbles. The Burbling Burbles Baby, or something like that, I don't know. Anyways, so, uh, anyways, you control a jeep, you have to shoot the, uh, little, uh, soldiers before they land, and you press one button to shoot, you press the other to change the orientation of your, uh, sprite, so you could, sh you know, change your aim, I guess, and, uh, it's a complete waste of time, and I don't know why I'm playing this. I've already played this before, and it's uh, called something else. I forgot. I don't care. Next. Next game on the list is Burrow Explorer. An interesting game where you have to navigate a maze in the dark with only your headlights to determine your close proximity. So, this is the only way you can see whether you have open paths or enemies to avoid or things of that nature. It's a fairly interesting concept, fairly forward thinking, actually. Applying a bit of realism and taking away all the fun. I tried my very best to make it to the end of the maze, but quite frankly, I just lost interest and moved on to something else. Which is what we're going to do right now. Next game is Cannonade. A single screen shooter that's basically a ripoff of Astro Smash or Astro Blast. And a subject of a much longer video, which so we won't spend too much time on this. We'll go with Close Quarters, which... Much like a previous game we looked at in this collection is a uh, thing where you control a crosshairs and you shoot down planes and avoid bullets. We're going to skip this one as well. We're going to move on to the next game, which is Coast Guard, which has a property unlike the other game we looked at. This is a fairly interesting shooter where, you know, much like some other game we looked at, you have to drop charges to destroy the submarines. The interesting thing here is that you have to use the D-pad to con determine the uh, depth of your charge. So it's not just shooting it down, your charge only reaches a certain level. So you just gotta go up and down, you move the little flags, and uh, yeah. It's an interesting idea, novel idea, but uh, after a while, it, it I only played long enough to make it to the next level, which to this game's credit, it has different backgrounds, but that's about all it has. So next. Our next game is Cub Adventure. You control a cub. You collect the gimmicks, you avoid the monsters, and your rival cub. Boring. Next. Our next game is Halley Who, Halley Ho, whatever, and wouldn't you know it, it's this maze game again with very narrow passages and shit collision detection. Next. Next game on the list is Tactful, and I have no idea what you're supposed to do in this game. I, I, I try and figure it out, but this music is annoying. I've heard it for several games now. So we're going to go ahead and skip on to the next game, which is Devil Dum, Devil Dum Doom. And I also don't know what you're supposed to do in this game. But at least you could shoot things, which is nice. And, 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 and what the hell are you supposed to do in these games? Do I really care? Not, not, not really. We're going to move on to the next game because my head hurts. Next game on the list is Diamond, which is basically a hack of Arkanoid, the Taito developed brick breaking game. Unlike in Arkanoid, where you have to clear the whole board to move on to the next stage, all you have to do in Diamond is hit the diamond and you move on to the next stage, so you don't even have to clear the whole board. You could just hit a few bricks and you're done, which is a nice way of alleviating the pain. Also, you have plenty of lives. Apparently, you have infinite lives. I've tried at one point to lose as many times as I could, so apparently you have infinite lives in this game and you only have one power-up which is to extend the uh, length of your uh, bat. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, this is a thing that's on this thing, and, 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 and yeah, next. Next game on the list is IQ Champion, and with a name like that, you figure this would be some sort of quiz game, but the uh, title screen suggests otherwise. Unfortunately, we're spared that particular indignity. Instead, we're getting a fairly boring, fairly simplistic, very rubbish single screen shooter where you shoot bugs from the sky and they turn into hearts and you shoot the hearts and why am I even bothering like we got like what a, a little over a hundred games left to go 
the uh, screen isn't badly drawn at least, so that's something, but yeah. Next. Next up we have Frantic Mouse, and I'll just let the footage speak for itself. Next up we have Free Cell, otherwise known as that card game that has appeared on Windows PCs for many, many, many decades. You can look it up elsewhere, I'm not really going to touch it because I've never played Free Cell that much to begin with. So we're going to move on to the next game, which is Fruit Dish, which is another rubbish game. <laughs> what a shock. It, it, fruits fall and you have to turn it into the matching fruit and, and, and I don't care. Next. Our next game is Gate, which is uh, uh, yet another redress of that maze game where you go through the teleporters and the doors and you collect all the hearts and you deal with the really stiff controls and the really precise collision detection that's so precise you can't even you barely fit in the little corridors and stuff and why am I even bothering next next game is goalkeeper which is pretty straightforward you try to score goals while the goalie defends and then you defend against the computer who will shoot at you Pretty straightforward, and the computer will always win. Next. Next game on the list is Fishing. It's a fishing game, and, uh, you know, it gives you a few options at least. You know, the size of the body of water, the uh, time of day, the lures, and stuff like that. And beyond that, it's a fishing game. It's a, you know, for the most part, it looks like a latter-day NES game. You know, some detailed graphics and nice animation with the fishermen. But other than that, it's just a fishing game. So... Yeah, next. Next game on the list is Strong P Strong Pill. Strong Pill. Basically, you have to reach the exit by pushing pots. And that's it. It's pretty self-explanatory, pretty boring. Next. Our next game is Primitive Man. Basically, a uh, kind of a flawed side-scrolling platform game where you control a caveman. You could walk, you could jump, you could toss rocks, but uh, unfortunately you don't control very well. You move fairly slowly, but you could crawl through narrow passages, which is something, I suppose. It's got potential, but the uh, controls and the slow pacing kind of kills it for me. And just in case the ladies feel left out, there's Primitive Woman, which is sort of a similar game, but has different levels and you play as a woman. I, I guess that's a woman, I suppose, or something. I don't know. Next. Next game on the list is Extreme Rally, and in a change of pace, this is a side-scrolling racing game where you have to try and reach the finish line before the other guy does, and you avoid all the obstacles and things of that nature. It's not the greatest thing ever, but it's something different at least, I, I, I guess, I suppose. Eh. Next game on the list is Frontline Gallop, and the only interesting aspect to this game is the mission briefing, where you're briefed by the general who looks vaguely sim similar to the one general from Codename Viper. Beyond that, you control a jeep whose main purpose in life is to get stuck in this little space and get blown up by the various enemy bases. Brilliant. Next. Next game on the list is Highway Rider, and say, do you remember that extreme rally game we saw two games ago? Well, it's here again, except now it's bikes. Brilliant. Next game. Our next game is River Jump, a fairly basic game where you have to cross the river by jumping on the same shape that's on your pad. So if you have a triangle, you jump on the triangle. If you have a square, you jump on a square, and so on and so forth. And, uh, whatever. Next. Our next game is Racing Fighter, which is another overhead driving game, but this time you have guns so you could shoot things, which is awesome. Another road fighter slash more of a, more of a space spy hunter vibe. I don't know if there are power ups. I didn't play long enough, but uh, hey, it's something different at least. So that's something. Next game on the list is Speed Challenge. All I could say about this game is imagine playing the old Micro Machine video game that used to be on the NES and countless other consoles, and giving it overly sensitive yet incredibly somehow incredibly stiff controls, and you have a Speed Challenge in a nutshell. This game 
is a thing that happened. That's all I'll say, that's nice. And apparently we just passed the 1 hour 30 minute mark, which is quite an accomplishment. And uh, somehow I got stuck there. It was just... Uh, next. Next! Next game on the list is Super Tennis. Even though it just says tennis on the title screen. And this is interesting because you actually play from the first person perspective rather than have a character on screen. And, and you have multiple characters to play with, a couple game options, but that's about it really. I'll be honest with you, I've never been good at tennis video games. This didn't really change much for me. So on the one hand, that's a bit too bad. But on the other hand, I do have some good news. We're about an hour 30 in and uh, we only got 100 games to go. So we're in the home stretch, folks. We're almost done, and uh, I couldn't be happier. Anyways. Wow. I promise you this is more interesting than the 100 games we're going to look at later. And now we're going to add some milk and put it in the mug and not outside like a dumbass. No sugar, because I don't really need any. Yeah, that's more like it. Alright, so now that we got our coffee, go back to playing this thing. Or rather, I'm just going to go back to dubbing the rest of the, uh, the footage that I got because this is just for show because I can't put any batteries inside. Come on, let's get this over with. Next up, we have Wonder Rabbit. Yep, that looks like a rabbit to me. Yes, sir. Anyways, this is a side-scrolling platform game, except this one has a bit of an extra feature. See, by pressing both the A and B buttons on your controller, you can switch forms. So one form can climb vines, another can fly in the air, another can punch rocks and clear the way. And another can swim. You no, know, you know, you got a couple of forms there that you could cycle through, and you could use these forms to navigate the level and find the key to the exit to the end of the level, which is not bad. It gives the game a bit of depth, more more so than other side scrollers. Quite frankly, more than other games aside from the eight main event games at the beginning of the video. The only caveats is the uh, controls. Not so much in terms of the way your your kangaroo rabbit thing controls because. It controls fine aside from the jumping wonky, but to switch abilities, you have to press both the face buttons, which is a bit cumbersome. If the pixel player had a select button, it would be better served changing and uh, mapping this ability to the, that button. But as it is, they have to make do with the limited controls they had. And well, I'll tell you this one. It doesn't kill the game outright. It's not that bad of a game. You know, first impressions. It's not, I wouldn't mind revisiting this somewhere down the line. So, uh... Yeah, good on you, Pixel Player. You gave me one game that I liked. Actually, one of several, but whatever. Next. 
Our next game is Rural Goblin, and it is another whack-a-mole game, with more holes and more moles to whack and stuff. Next. Next game is Hexapod War, where you control a little fish and you have to eat other little fish while avoiding the big fish. And after 30 seconds of gameplay not even, you question why you're even bothering with this piece of crap. Our next game is Lunarian, and it's another one of these single-screen shooters. No thank you, let's move on to something else. Let's move on to Panzer Attack, which is also a single-screen shooter. Except now you have tanks and stuff, and it's boring. And finally we have Pobble, which is uh, another one of those wretched overhead driving games where you're on a boat and whatever. Why am I even bothering? Next. Next up we have Polar Bat. Kunyu kun Polar Bat apparently, and say, do you remember this game? And this game? And this game? Well, guess what? It's here again. I counted at least four of these stupid things. There may be another one that I might have missed. But, uh, here we are again. For fuck's sake, leave me alone. Not enough. So next game on the list is Season Garden. And, uh, well, the preview gave it a worry, but it's Whack-A-Mole again. With an annoying tune, but it's just Whack-A-Mole. This one is kind of interesting, at least, not really, because it has four different color palettes to represent the four seasons. So, there's that to look forward to if you're willing to play through the whole thing, and I did end up playing through the whole thing, and you just get a game over when you win or something, I guess. But anyways, I've had my share of whack-a-mole and the similar type of games, so we're gonna move on to the next game, which is The Archer. The Archer is fairly interesting and all that stuff, and uh, looks looks like it's gonna be a fun game and stuff, so let's play The Archer and- Oh, fuck you! Our next game is Undersea Arena, and the best way to describe this game is that it's very much a one-sided battleship. Remember Battleship? The board game? Well, this is that, except not as fun, I guess. Next. Our next game is F-22, and despite the title screen depicting a fighter jet in deep space, this is actually a vertical scrolling shooter that takes place in planet Earth over a river. To this game's credit, it's a more involved shooter compared to what we've seen before on this console, with power-ups that gives you extra drone ships and things of that nature. This is actually a fun little shooting game, and if I played farther enough, I'm sure I would get like extra levels and bosses and things of that nature. Uh, maybe I'll go back and uh, spend a little more time on this one. But I don't have time right now, I've got these other things to look at, so uh, oh well. From a fun shooting game, we go to Abscondi, which is a maze game where you have to collect all the chests to unlock a flight of stairs that you have to climb to reach the next level. It's a pretty boring game, for the most part, and uh, but it is colorful, but it also has an annoying tune in the background. So, yep, next. Our next game is Agile Mice, and say, do you remember the mowing game that I only showed five seconds of before we moved on to the next thing? Well, 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 it's here again. Except instead of mowing lawns, you're collecting balls, and 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 it's it's even the stay the same map layout, and and who cares? Next, next game on the list is Alone, and um, yeah, it's another one of these stationary shooters things. This one has shields, but that's about all it has, so... Next. Next game on the list is Horse Racing, although it's more horse riding. As you're not really racing anything, you're just hopping over rocks and you dodge little knives that uh, are thrown off screen. And uh, you, you're subject to the sound of the horse running. Even if the horse is off screen or in the air, it's just constantly going on. It's the only sound effect that you listen to in this game, and that's it. Next. So, anyways, moving on to the next game. Sky Dreamer. Look at that happy fellow. Unfortunately, I'm not quite happy playing this thing. It's a side-scrolling platform game where platforms disappear, you ha your jumping is awkward, and uh, there's no apparent goal to this game other than, I guess, move to the right and hopefully eventually get to an end of a level if such a thing exists. Um, I guess, I suppose, I don't know. 
Oh well, moving on. Next. Next game on the list is Sky Wink, which is, of course, a vertical scrolling shooter. Much like the other game that we looked at a while ago, it has power-ups so you get different weapons and things of that nature. And, uh, eh, it's okay. Kind of a 1942-1943 sort of thing. The graphics are kind of colorful. The tune's kind of annoying, but that's to be expected. And, uh, yeah. Oops. Next game on the list is Zooming. And this is another vertical scrolling non-shooting game. Because apparently you don't shoot in this game, you just collect blue balls. I'll leave that to you to take it however you want, but the bottom line is... It's something different, at least. Pity you can't shoot things, but uh, there you go. Next. Next game on the list is Fishing, which I, I think should be pretty self-explanatory. This one adds a twist by giving you a computer opponent, so... You're both fishing against each other or something. I, I, I don't know. I don't care. Next. Behold the King. That's the name of the game. Just King. You control the King. Who uh, can shoot things and climb vines and hang on vines and things of that nature. It's a colorful side-scrolling game. Has that awkward jumping mechanics, but... Uh, yeah, well, that's kind of unfortunate. Hey, you could swing. That's that's kind of nice. I have to save your uh, fellow apes, and I can't reach this platform or, or, or something. I don't know. Eh, it's a thing. Oh, 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 no. I guess not. Oh, well, I guess I can't help you. The king doesn't have time, doesn't have the patience to help you. Oh, no, we can't do that either. Oh, well, next. Next up, we have Mahjong. Mahjong. Whatever. It's that game that I can't play. Then there's roulette. Then there's craps. Then there's old maid. And there's... Actually, I like the tune in the roulette game, but other than that... Jesus Christ. Next game is Shrew Mouse. Well, except you're not really playing as mice, you're playing it well I guess you are mice you're leave a trail behind cr try not to crash into the trail and outlast the other mice and and then or otherwise that happens and, and yeah well, that's kind of unfortunate in any event we're gonna play the next game which is uh crazy eights and it's four fucking cards fuck off yeah next game on the list is sunken ship and oh my god this <laughs> Yes! Yeah. <laughs> it's a Titanic game, for everybody! Is that a bootleg Titanic game? <laughs> Alright! This is it this is this makes it all worth it now. Uh, unfortunately I gotta play it on this piece of crap, but hey That's that's one worthwhile game on this stupid thing. <laughs> Okay, next. Our next game is The Hacker, and this is another side-scrolling platform game wherein you have funny little kicks like that. And later in the game, there's even a power-up that gives you a weapon and a uh, costume change. Uh, didn't spend too much time on this game, much like many of the games on this system, because there's way too many games, but this one looks vaguely interesting. Maybe one of these days I might revisit this, but not today. I want to get this other shit out of the way first. Our next game is Hard Mission, and, uh, oh, there's no title screen. I was going to do the, hey, remember that game that we looked at ages ago? Well, it's here again. But instead, you know what You know what I'm going to do? Because I just found the footage. I'm going to swap this with the other game that we're going to look at, Planet Strikers for the Atari 7800. Played off the Atari Flashback console, which was basically an NES on the chip, and shares the same sound effects, which... Is piercing a hole through my brain. I better stop now. Next. Okay, so uh, after all that noise, it's time to uh, play Adventurer and say, do you remember this game? And say, do you remember this game? 
And see, so remember this game? Well, guess what? It's here yet again. Yeah. One more time. No, 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 no. Let's just move on to the next game, which is Labyrinth and Say. <laughs> Do you remember this game? Well, guess what? It's here yet again. Oh, God damn it. It looks, I actually like the way this version looks than the other one, but it's the same shit. Ah, right, come on, give me something else. There, we got air alert. Looks like it's gonna be another, oh, hold on. This is, uh, this is different. Is it different? <laughs> this is just a hack of Sevius. They, 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 they fucked up the music a bit. But it's it's just Zevius. You It's like you go back and you you see it has the original. <sighs> At least you have some version of Zevius, even if it sounds and looks like shit. Oh well. Okay, so from there we move on to First Defender, and it's a rather rubbish Space Invaders clone. Not much else to it, it's just a rubbish Space Invaders clone. Your shots move a little faster than its Space Invaders, but... It's a Space Invaders clone, so there's not much else to say there. Eh, so anyways, fuck it, let's move on to the next game, which is... Battle! Oh, come on! Ah, <laughs> oh, come on! You fuck up the sounds for Xevious, but but the Galaga you leave intact. You just change the graphics. Guys, you're not even trying now. For fuck's sake. Eh. Whatever. Next. Next game on the list is Benthol. And it's loading for some reason. Don't know why it's loading, but uh, there you go. Benthol, and this is pretty much a... Tetris clone-ish thing, except instead of tetrominoes, you have triangles and odd shapes that you have to try and make the lines out of. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give them this. It's something different, but uh, it'll take you a while to actually make a line, if, if you have, even if you have the patience to do so, that is. And uh, patience is... Uh, um, I don't know, I wasn't really into this one. Uh, you know, if I want to do a Tetris knockoff, I'll just stick with Tetris. Even something like Hat Tricks is a bit... Okay, the line's gone. Anyways, moving right along to the uh, next game, which is Blob Man. And Blob Man is a fairly simple thing. You control the blob man, you have to catch all the drops that is the same color as you. So if you're red, you catch the red drops and you avoid the rest. If you're green, you catch the green drops and you avoid the rest. You do this until blob man is completely full and you move on to the next stage, which is pretty much the same thing. And, uh, yeah, it's a thing. Next. Next game on the list is Bolt Action, or actually, no, it's Bolt Action. And while this game might have the appearance of a pretty neat space shooter thing or, or thing, uh, I actually, you know what, I kind of gave it away. This is just a rehash of Star Force, the less than classic game of shooters that, that served as the precursor to the Star Soldier series by somebody else. Uh, you don't believe me, here's some Star Force footage. The only real difference between Bolt Action and Star Force is that Star Force has a couple interesting melodies, whereas Bolt Action does not. Next. Our next game is Cowpoke. And, uh, wow, what a cowpoke head. Say, do you remember that warrior game that we looked at about a couple hundred games ago with the zipline and all that? Well, guess what? It's back. It's all I got. Next. 
Our next game is Dragon, or as some other folks would like to call it, Snake. 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 That's how the meme goes, right? Right? Or am I thinking of something else? Ah, who cares? Uh, good news, everybody. We're about 60 games away from the finish line. There is indeed a tunnel at the end of this wretched light. That's not how it goes. Eh, who cares? We're almost done. Next. 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 From dragons to fairies. And, uh, yep, yeah, you control a fairy. Yep, yep, yep. Anyways, let's jump right into this. And, uh, this is a vertical scrolling shooter. You control a fairy who has gas for some reason. And, um, anyways, we're just gonna go through this fast, fast. And, uh, and I'm dead. Oh, well, anyways, moving right along to, uh, hearts. And hearts, it's, it's, it's cards. Cards. Cards, everybody. It's hearts. Hearts, cards, lots of card games and, 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 you know, table games on this thing and lots of gambling games on this collection where you don't win any money, which would have been nice if you could win money. I'd like to win my money back, but what's done is done. We might as well move on to the uh, next game. Anytime now. Anytime. There we go. That, that's more like it. So hurry, bury. Where you control a uh, mutant dog thing. And, uh, I guess you gotta collect all the gimmicks or something like that. Whatever. Next. Next game on the list is Lad Angel, which is basically a slight hack of Challenger, a Famicom-only release. And, uh, I'm gonna start off with a bit of footage of how every game of Challenger usually goes for me. Yep. Our next game is Lucky Ball. And Lucky Ball, we're going to see in a minute, is basically a hack of pinball for the NES. Same sound effects, but a slightly different layout compared to uh, pinball. But it is pinball for the NES. And, uh, yep, next. Our next game is Dark Castle, where you're in a forest, you have to outrun a dragon, and that's about all I really know. I, I really don't know how this game functions. I guess you have to kill the dragon, and I don't know how to do that. Although I did kill a dragon by accident. I don't know how I did it, but there you go. And then another one appears, and I guess you have to go to the castle or something, or... I don't know. This one confounds me. It looks like an Intellivision game. I, I, I guess it, it's not a not. Eh, eh. Next. All right. Next game on the list is Goblet Tower. And uh, yeah, it's a simple puzzle. This is how you perform the puzzle. Oh, that was worthless. Next. Our next game is, oh, it's another Nature Clan forest adventure thing. This one's a side-scrolling platform thing where you hop on logs and branches and things of that nature and you collect things and gimmicks and stuff like that, and that's all I've got. Not very exciting in the jumping mechanics, like a bunch of these platform games are not the greatest. Also, I, I, I don't mention the controls, which... On this thing is reversed from the traditional NES layout, and it doesn't really help, and... Well, next. Our next game is Mouse Hero, and I won't waste time on here. Catch the teddies, avoid the bombs, pretty self-explanatory kaboom clone. Next up we have Music Moment. Catch all the uh, blood drops, while, and if you do, it plays a note, which plays music. It's pretty self-explanatory. And our next game is Speed Racing, or rather, Over Speed Racing. Where they take the heads-up display from Rad Racer, dump it into a mediocre racing game, and you have Over Speed Racing. At the very least, the controls for the car aren't too bad, but that's not really saying a whole lot, so yeah. Next. Next game on the list is Panda Adventure. Where you play as a panda, and you... Walk to the right, you avoid the animals. 
An annoying sound effect plays when you jump. An annoying tune plays in the background as you play, and... Ugh. Next. Our next game is Panzer Flycar, which is basically, you know, another hack of Road Fighter. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Next. Next game on the list is Power Robot. Look at that title screen end. Well, say, do you remember this spring gesture game from a couple hundred games ago where you have to jump on these platforms and that sort of thing? Well, guess what? It's here yet again in a different form. And, yeah, the song sucks. The game is still not very good and not very fun. And... Next! Well, next up we have Red Dog, and it is a casino game... Nope! Moving right along, we're gonna play Revenge of Flyer. Um, looks like a shooter, Revenge of the Flyer, and, um, okay, let's run through the whole... Remember this game? From ages ago, I forgot what this game is called, but... Remember that game? Then you remember Seaport Growl? Which looks like the same game because it is the same game. Well, well, guess what? Guess what? You wouldn't... You can't... Uh, it is again. Except now you play as a plane. And the funny thing is, even though you're playing as a plane, you're still blocked by these walls, which is stupid. But whatever. Next! So let's move on to the next game on our list, which is Shift. And Shift is that game where you push blocks into Spocks and stuff and... Nope. No thank you, not playing this, we're going on to something else. Let's try Slapjack. It's cards. Uh, no thank you, no slap nuts. we're not playing that. We're gonna move on to something else, which is Sudoku- Oh, for fuck's sake, are you, you kidding me, right? Who in the blue hell would want to play Sudoku with a D-pad? If I wanted to play Sudoku, I'll do it in a book, or I'll have Brain Age on the DS, I'll play it there. Come on, let's move on to something- There we go. Astro Robo Toto. Basically a hack of Astro Robo Sasa, where they replace the robot character that's normally in this game with, uh, Millen from Millen's Secret Castle, or something. This game's interesting, though, because in order to move, you shoot in one direction and you move in the opposite direction you're shooting, which makes for an interesting game mechanic. And you, you still have to shoot things and stuff. But, eh, it's a nice idea. Surprised we never got this. Probably because us uh, stupid North Americans would be confounded by something like this, but hey, it's something. Next game on the list is Tummy, or Tunny. And you play as characters either John or Rose. This is a hack of a game called Sun Sun from Capcom. And even if you've never played the original game that this is a hack of, you could tell that this is a hack of another game because the original character's name shows up on the uh, top left corner of the screen here. You see, it's before it was John, now it's Sun Sun, and... Or however you're supposed to... Anyways, it's Sun Sun, and yeah. Next. Next game on the list is Aether, and this is basically a ROM hack of the Famicom-only release, Warp Man, where you have to kill aliens in this one single square, and there's also a bonus stage where you place bombs around a... Uh, Another screen and that sort of thing. Eh, it's a thing. Alright, so we're gonna blow through the next few games here rather quickly. The music sucks here. Aether Cavess is basically a hack of that Famicom Macross game that appears on several multi-carts. Where you could fly as a ship, or you could transform into a robot, or, you know, somewhere in between. And, uh, never been too good at this game to be honest with you. When it was on a multi-card, and it was called Macross. Uh, so, playing it on this thing is even worse, but... We're gonna skip to the, uh, the next game on the list, which is Air Umbrella. And Air Umbrella... Take a gander here. It's, a uh, balloon fight. It's just straight-up balloon fight. You only have the one-player mode, you can't pick the balloon trip or two players for obvious reasons. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, we're gonna skip that. We're gonna see Barak Bakarat, which is cards, and we're not playing cards! 
and play something. Well, how about billiard? Billiard. Oh, God damn, they fucked up the music here. Oh, God damn. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Billiard is, is basically a, a hack of... Uh, how appropriate we start just as the white ball goes. Anyways, it's a hack of Lunar Pool. Which is a pool game where you have different uh, pool tables and things of that nature. And uh, we'll move on to something else. Bitha is uh, basically a uh, ROM hack of that uh, Puyon game that appears on several NES multi-carts. And uh, that's also kind of appropriate. Next. Next game is Bomb, which is a ROM hack of some other game that I, whose name I don't remember. All I know is that it has an annoying tune in the background, and I, I, I can't play this game for the life of me. And um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, because I, I really don't like this game. I, I really don't. Next. Alright, next game on the list is Bounce. And Bounce is just a ROM hack of Mappy. Next. Our next game is Bug Bear, which is basically another whack-a-mole game. Next. Our next game is G3, Copra of Sky, which is basically a ROM hack of Raid on Bungling Bay, one of the earliest games by Will Wright, the man who would eventually create the SimCity game. And I'll just say right off the bat, I'd much rather be playing SimCity than this game in any incarnation. That's just me, though. Some people might actually like this, but I, I, I never really cared for it. Next. Okay, let's blow through these rather quickly. Combata is basically a ROM hack of Ninja-kun. A game where you control a little ninja and you kill all these other critters to clear the stage. Get some power-ups, there are different stages you could play through, and, and that's about it, really. Eh. Eh. This appears on the multi-carts, it's not bad. That's it. Anyways, we're going to move on to the next game. Uh, it's the Conqueror. <laughs> yeah, some Conqueror. It's basically a ROM hack of Circus Charlie. Where you usually control a little clown and you do circus acts. Uh, we're not going to play that all that much. Conte Ener 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 Energy? Conte Energy? A completely mangled music, but it this is pretty much Load Runner. Load Runner. It's Load Runner. Well, let me tell you, it's fucking Load Runner. Anyways, moving right along, we got the next game is Dada. Uh, and you got to admire that music. I really admire this music too. Now, this is obviously a, a ROM hack of Popeye. And uh, if you've never played Popeye, you could tell this is a ROM hack because if you look at the top right corner, you'll see Popeye's head in the, uh, in the, in the heads up. That's how many lives you have, by the way. And if that is not enough of an obvious indication, check out the tune when you pick up the spinach. Yeah, that's the Popeye theme. They, they they kept the Popeye theme. They kept the Popeye head. They kept the Popeye theme. They they changed everything else, and it's shit. Next. Oh my god, you guys. We're 25 games away from the end of the road. So now we're going to look at Dragon Den, and, well... Remember this game? You remember this game? <laughs> you remember this game, and this game, and... This game, whoa. Six times this game has shown up on this thing. The same crappy gameplay, the same crappy music, the same everything. Only the graphics have changed. Some of the layouts. Was this format really hot shit? Oh well, next. And the music just stopped. Thank fuck for that. Next. Next game on the list is Dune War. As far as this game is concerned, I only have one question that's worth asking. Exactly what the fuck am I supposed to do in this game? You just roam around the desert, you shoot at things, but beyond that... The fuck am I... What? 
whatever. Next. We're almost done. All right. Next game on the list is Edacity Snakes. And uh, it's just snakes. It's just snake. It's just another snake game. It's just snake. Just snake. 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 So we're going to move on to uh, Garden War. And uh, Garden War is just that, that, that shooter again. The single screen shooter where shit flies all over the place. You try to shoot it and after a while the, the stage just ends. You move on to the next stage. Whatever. Next. On to the next game. And uh, yeah. This is the game. <laughs> Whatever. Next. Alright, so we're gonna blow through the next few games quickly. Hit Mouse is another whack-a-mole game. Because of course it is. Antiquarium is uh, another fishing game. This is all you're- I'm just showing it. Huddle is yet another hack of pinball. For the NES. Another hack of pinball. That's two hacks of pinball. That's- that's impressive, actually. Not quite impressive is the shot out of the gate, but that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Anyways, uh, Jungle Guy is a uh, redressing of that uh, Grot Kid game that we looked at a short while ago. I still have no clue how you're supposed to play this game. Oh well. Next game is Mars, and I'm just going to spoil it. It's another Star Force hack with horrible music. Well, the, only the op opening tune is horrible. The rest of the game is, well, meh. Star Force, next. All right, so we're going to blow through um, more games. We're going to blow through quickly. Mars Man is basically a ROM hack of Binary of Land, a Famicom-only release where, you know, you're trying to get the two lovers together. The sound craps out at this point due to the wiring, not the system itself. Next game is Memory Test, which is a card-matching game, self-explanatory. Pie Gun is a card game. We're not going to play this. And Penguin is another ROM hack of Nuts and Milk, another Japan-only release. Actually, in hindsight, now that I think about it, you know, if you're going to call a game Penguin, you might as well use Antarctic Adventure, which features a penguin, and you just call it Penguin. But I guess I guess we got to use this instead. Okay. Whatever. Next. On to the second to last page with Puzzle, which is a sliding puzzle thing. And you uh, you slide the puzzle, you get in the right order, and then, uh, why, I'm not, I, I don't like this thing normally, so we're not going to do it. So our next game is Penta Bass. What a wonderful piece of music in the background. And say, do you remember five days that we looked at Ages ago, where you only shoot in five directions. Well, that's uh, Penta Base in a nutshell. Your only indication that you're in what your direction you're aiming is the uh, little uh, glowy things in the middle. And, um, yeah, yeah, it's still not very fun and still very limiting. Anyways, we're going to move on to the next game, which is... Sea War, which is basically a graphics hack of Battle City, a game that common that commonly frequents the NES multi-cart Famicom multi-cart scene, and um, this doesn't have the uh, the track creation system, which is unfortunate but not surprising. Next game on the list is Sky Invader, which is basically a another hack of a game called Sky Destroyer, another frequent uh, contender in the uh, multi-cart scene. Sort of an afterburner space harrier type thing. Um, there's no sound because the sound is broken. <laughs> it's not the software, it's the actual hardware and stuff. I, I, maybe it is the hardware, I don't know. Anyways, the uh, next game we have is Spar. Actually, no. I wanted. I wanted. To, I wanted to skip, but it's actually Space War. That's my bad. Anyway, Space War is uh, basically a graphics hack of uh, Exerian, another Famicom-only release, and another frequent uh, visitor of the multi-cart scene. 
I like what they did with the blue sky here. Then I died. Now we move on to Spar, which is uh, basically a hack of Urban Champion. A really old and really bad fighting game from the NES days. The One of the black box games. Not very good. Next. With only six games remaining, it's at this point where the sound completely dies. So let's get this over with Strafe. Is that game with five days and the uh, penta base that the, the thing you'll get only anyways next tactful monkey is championship load runner because uh, Vanilla load runner was too much for me now. They throw in this champion edition. No, thank you The farmer if you remember that arena game we looked at a couple hundred games ago It's this except with farm animals TNT is basically a graphics hack of Bomberman, the Bomberman, the first, the first Bomberman game, the very first Bomberman game. That one likes to get hacked quite a bit for some reason. And then we move on to UFO Race, which is a ROM hack of F1 Race, except you're racing with UFOs with screeching tires, which would have been nice to listen to if the. And then finally, we have. X Racing, which is basically a ROM hack of Zippy Race, a rather mediocre driving game on the Nintendo Famicom. And with that, we bring this video to a merciful close as all 308 games on this Pixel Player device has been accounted for. And, well... <laughs> I think there's only one way to end this video. The only way I could think of, because um, my brain hurts. I'm going to bed. Goodbye.